minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. You are now tapped into the coolest reptile podcast in the world. Welcome to the Trap Talk Podcast presents Holy Gecko Session. I'm your boy, MJ. What is good? If this is your first time tapping in, do your boy a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Smash that notification bell. That way you're on top of every single podcast I drop here on the Trap Talk Podcast YouTube channel. Shout out to all my subscribers out there. Um, also, let me know in the comment section how you're liking each episode. What is it that you're learning the most? What is it that you're enjoying the most out of each show? Really means a lot. Uh, yeah, man. Listen, even if you don't subscribe and you watch this, I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for giving me the time of day. I'm excited for tonight's episode. Shout out to all the early birds. I see you guys right there. I'll get to you guys in just a second. But uh, if you're looking for exclusive content, if you want to get more than what you see here on a weekly basis, um, and if you just want to tap in with some amazing people, best thing you can do is go down to the link below and click on the very first link you see in the description. It's the Trap Talk Patreon family that you can fucking be a part of. It's amazing. Once you become a part of the Patreon family, you get a link to the Discord, which taps you in with over 150 trappers. Die hard mofos in the reptile game. But seriously, man, the Discord, you get so much out of it. So many people giving information, so much to learn. If you're looking to buy snakes, if you're looking to sell snakes, or even geckos, man, any, any reptile related shit. We even have a dog uh, page in, in, in the Discord, man. You could, you could get it all with the Trap Talk family Patreon. Uh, so become a Patreon member today. Cannot wait. I got to say thank you to all my Patreon members. You guys are my heart. Uh, and then also, uh, you know, got to be ready for the next Sound Check Chronicle exclusive episode to drop. I got something that's going to drop pretty juicy here uh, in the next week or so. So, and that's only for my Patreon members. That's all I got to say. Uh, listen, before we get into things, I got to say tonight's episode is brought to you by Rami over at the Reptile Super Show, the biggest, coolest reptile show on the West Coast by far. Cannot wait to get to Pomona in January. Are you going to Pomona? Man, a lot of big historical moments happening this January at Pomona. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this. Head over to reptilesupershow.com. Head over to Reptile Super Show on Instagram. Be ready. Get your tickets. It's going to be sick. Pomona 2023. And then also I want to say shout out to Brian Potter and Bob Ashley over at NARBC, the Super Bowl of Reptile Shows. Shit. Man, I had the best time of my life at an NARBC, man. Met some of the best people. I think I met David at a – nope, I take that back. I met David at Animal Con. Then I met him at an NARBC. Anyways, we'll talk more about it. I got to say right now, man, the shows will change your life because it connects a lot of dots. It's cool to have a big face on the internet. Social media platforms, very huge part, which David's a huge part of the social media platforms. But the guy goes to shows. He goes to places like Animal Con. He really connects himself with the people. I think once you connect yourself with the people in person, it really changes everything. So thank you so much, Reptile Super Show. Thank you so much, NARBC. On Instagram, the Trap God 619 I post a lot of my passion projects and even some stuff I have for sale when it comes to ball pythons. I have quite a bit of ball python stuff, just like everyone else, <laughs> uh, for sale. Uh, I haven't put it on Morph Market yet, but I will be here soon. So, oh, yeah, go give me a fall on Morph Market, please. Uh, the Trap Exotics on Morph Market. And then, um, yeah, go give me a follow there because you can stay on top of all my production. Then also, if you're on Facebook, head over to my Facebook page, the Trap Talk Podcast on Facebook, and go give that shit a like. I appreciate it so much, but what's good? Where's my early birds at? Who's ready for tonight? I'm ready for this. This is just going to be popping. Julio Fulio in the building. What's up, player? Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Slithery Serpents in the building. What's up, player? Chantel, what's up, homegirl? Trap Talk Patreon member, Trap Talk team, Zoom Dreams, Trap Talk management team right here. It's my girl right here. Female relations. That's what she's in part. That's what she's in charge of. That's my homegirl. JKJ Reptiles, what is up? Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Ricky Bobby. My homie right here, 
Trap Talk Patreon member, Team Zoo Dreams all day, every day. Runyon Reptiles, what is up, player? Thanks for tapping in. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Dom from 702 Serpents, Las Vegas' finest. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. We got to get our episode in, bro. Hit me up. We need that. I got some short tail stuff coming to the uh, Trap Talk roundtable here soon. That, that, that's right. Short tail Python lovers, be ready. It's going to be going off here soon. Uh, but Dom, tap in with me. We got to talk. HP Reptiles, the homie Herbert. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Thank you so much for your support, buddy. Josh, Scale Fins and Feathers, what is up? Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Uh, Eric's More Factory, what is up? Thanks for tapping in. MKB Reptiles, what is up? Thanks for tapping in. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. The homie Adler, add Dizzle for Shizzle. It's my secret weapon. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Adler, we got to talk to. I mean, we talk almost every day, but I got a, I got an idea. We need to talk. It's my dog right here. A&E Foundry. Serpent Eclipse Reptiles, go give him a follow on Instagram. He actually started something really amazing. Uh, the the was it the the the, the housewife, house, housewife reptiles? Remind me to do that. Anyways, that's an awesome segment that he has going on. Go over to his page on Instagram and go see what it's all about. Reptile wives, that's what it is. Reptile wives, right? Anyways, I thought it was really good. Wise guy, what is up? Thanks for tapping in. Forget about it. Dylan, these nuts. Thanks for tapping in, buddy. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Don't be big Mike Herp collectors in the building. Thanks for tapping in, player. Appreciate you so much. Colin Schumark. What up, Colin Schumark? Thanks for tapping in. Uh, let's see. Ooh, big keys in the building. What's up, keys? Gotta love the homie keys, man. That's my dog right there. Darren Owens in the building. What's up, Darren Owens? That sounds like a, an athlete or something like that for sure. Uh, Jamie Pico Pythons. What is up, player? Thanks for tapping in. Bods Exotic. The homie Jeremy in the building. Thanks for tapping in. Travis F. What's up, Travis F., the homie Jerome in the building? Uh, guys, listen, do me a favor. If you guys don't mind, please head over to Instagram to No Limit Royals. The uh, We're all family, right? A lot of things could happen to any of us where it's like kind of like, what the fuck, you know? I don't want to get into de the, to details of what happened to this man and his business partner, but it's very unfortunate. My heart goes out to Jerome and his other half to the No Limit Royal family. I'm so sorry that ever happened um well, you know just like i said guys i don't want to get into details but if you guys can please do me a favor okay head over to instagram to no limit royals um and if you want to be able to help him out with what's going on with this current situation because it's very horrific it's very terrible what had happened um but you could help out go over to no limit royals click on his story and anything helps you know let's uh you know shit Fit reptile family we gotta all stick together right so jerome i'm so sorry for your uh for what you're dealing with i'm sorry for your loss and uh yeah man if you need anything let me know um jerome we all love jerome so for sure all right moving forward addicted to crusties addicted to crusties okay that's a sick ass name i'm not gonna lie that's pretty hard the homie jonathan wilcox reptile supply in the building what is up uh, Elite Exotics BP, one of the newest Trap Talk Patreon members to join the family. Thanks for tapping in with us, buddy. 422 Pythons, what is up? Thanks for tapping in. Timothy Fryson, what is up, Timothy Fryson? Constrictor Connection, another new heavy hitter to come over to the Trap Talk Patreon family. Thanks for so much for joining. Uh, Peter, hi, Peter. Thanks for coming in. And we're going to end it with Evolver Reptile. Sick. Thanks for tapping in. Guys, it's Sunday. That means one thing. It's all dedicated to the gecko breeders. That's right. MJ is just waking up. Not literally, but I'm just saying. Gecko breeders got it going on, man. If you want to talk about the business side of things, how to grow, how to move, how to do Black Friday specials, we are tapping in with somebody who's doing great on all those categories, man. I got so many questions from my man, David, over at Tiki Geckos. Are you ready, man? Do something that you got to do to stay hydrated. Do something you got to do to get your mind right, no matter what that is. But fucking strap up, because it's going to get hot. It's going to get heavy. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Episode 270 coming right at you. David of Tiki Geckos. Cheers. It's good. You ready for do, do more in the future? Trap yes. Talk podcasts? Yes. Man. Oh. Only trap talk, exclusive. Yes, exclusive. exclusive. <laughs> oh. So stop calling us. Rub the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the crop, gotta love it, love it, and not I'm hot from the hop to the rub the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the rub the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the rub the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the rub the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the Everybody, we do it. Everybody, 
A.K.A. Mr. Tiki Geckos in the building. What's up, man? That's quite an intro, bro. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, sorry. I, I, I get nice. pretty hyped. I'm hyped. No, that's awesome, bro. I like the energy. Starts me off right. No exactly. coffee needed. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how you living, David? Thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, listen, like I said, I, I had the pleasure of meeting you in person. Um, but I, I've known about your account ever since being in the hobby, man. You've been around for a while from the social media standpoint of things. Um, so before we're getting, before we get into things, how let everyone, how you're doing and, and where are you located? You're in Florida, correct? Just so I could get my mind around your demographic. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in South Florida. I live in West Palm beach and yeah. I'm doing awesome, man. I love this stuff. This reptiles and, and animals is what I live for. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to be here and, and get to talk more of that with you. 100%. Now you do have somebody who's another half of this. That's your brother, correct? I mean, I met I met both you guys at Animal Con in person. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's Manny. He's not my blood brother, but I he's he's like he's like a brother to me. We've been best right. friends since like high school and he's helped me out ever since. So we're we're like this. So you guys go back pretty far um and I'm assuming the reptile game goes back pretty far for you. Yeah, man. I, ever since I was a little kid, as as far as I can remember, I've loved animals and reptiles in particular. You know, I think we all start with a fascination of dinosaurs, and that's what get, that's what gets us into it. Right. But uh, yeah, as far as I can remember, always loved reptiles. You know, and, and it's crazy, bro. I feel like it's a gift that a lot of us reptile keepers have with the kind of love. Because like you got to understand, if you love a reptile, you love almost any animal for the most part, yeah. right? Like you fucking yeah. love it all, and you know, nothing against other people, but some people just don't have that kind of love for animal. And I don't understand any of those people. Like it, I don't, I don't, I don't hate them, but man, I couldn't, that's like, you know, have you ever met somebody who doesn't listen to music? You know, it's funny. There's even rap people with people that don't listen to music but for, for me. Music is like music helps me get through my day sometimes. So yeah. I just, I just don't like, there's certain things that I, I'm so happy that I love because I don't know. I can't imagine a person who doesn't love animals. Like, what do you like? What is it that you love? Like, yeah. I, I think about that all the time, especially when people say, oh, I love, I love animals, all this, that, the other. Then I'm like, oh, do you, you know, I show them snakes or geckos or whatever. And they're like, ew, ew. And then I'm like, do you like horses? Do you, like, what do you like? And they just end up liking dogs. I'm like, no, you don't love animals. You just love your dog. Yeah. It's not, not a love for animals because we love animals regardless of if they love us back. We love them regardless if, you know, they're giving us some sort of benefit. Most of these reptiles could care less if we exist and we still love them. So I like to try to give parents the props whenever they, whenever I can, because I do feel like it's all about the parents. The parents let a lot of the kids do what they want to do. Like, like myself, my, even though my mom wasn't for me having a snake at six years old, my, my dad made it happen. How, how are your parents with the reptiles growing up? Were they always okay with it? Or was it kind of like a sin to have around? What was that like? No, they've always been super supportive. When I first, my first reptile ever was a bearded dragon. And when I got that thing, my mom didn't even want to look at it or touch it or whatever. But as time went on and they got used to all the animals, she would carry them around and she loves them now. She's not scared of anything. I've put like, you know, like eight feet Burmese pythons on my mom, no problem. And she's cool with it. Uh, but yeah, they've always been supportive. My business started in my mom's garage because I... I had I asked them to let me borrow some money, fifteen hundred dollars, when I was in high school to buy a, a lot of geckos, and that's what kicked off the whole thing. So they've always been supportive. How old were you in high school when you when you asked for that fifteen hundred dollar investment? Um, what was it? How old was I? I was probably like sixteen or so. 
And how were you as a kid then? Be honest. Like, were you kind of a wild child or did you kind of have your shit together? Like, did, was it easy for your parents to be like, all right, well, we'll, well, let's see what you're made out of. Or, or did you have to kind of prove yourself? Um, no, I actually, I, I've always been very, um, I haven't been like a crazy kid or a bad kid or anything like that. I've been pretty disciplined. I started That's in good. martial arts very young and Smart. before I wanted to breed reptiles and sell reptiles full time, I wanted to be a fighter. And so wow. I always, I was always very, uh, responsible. So my parents had no problem lending me that. Of course it's not, uh, I mean, especially for us at that time, it wasn't like something that you could just throw around $1,500, but my parents, you know, put it together and, and then, you know, the rest is history of what that turned into. I want to say that's some very golden advice for any young kid who, cause you know, here, God bless. There's some young kids that come across my podcast and they get a lot of information. I'm sorry to their parents cause what they have to deal with. But you know, at the end of the day, their parents really, or excuse me, the kids are grasping a lot of information cause it's YouTube. YouTube is kids are all over YouTube. You know, it does, so it doesn't matter. They hashtag something, it pops up. Um, but I got to tell you that advice is good for anybody who could get help from anyone like meaning. So like, you know, yeah, there's kids involved, but there's also teenagers. Like there's, there's teenagers fresh out of high school, just like yourself. And, you know, parents like, you know, I've been around kids who had awesome parents where like, all right, like, what do you want to do? Like, I I'm, I'm giving you like, you know, you know, some parents give you that space after you graduate, like here's like a yeah. year or two, but you better, you better like show me a path that you're trying to create or do something. Right. Um, yeah. I feel like there's a lot of those kids in the game. Like there's a lot of those like situational things happening right now in the hobby. And it's, it's important for those kids to be on those ki parents, good side. Like you want to, you want your parents to believe in what you're doing, especially when it comes to the reptiles, because you could become fucking David, you know what I mean? After so many years. And you know, it's just, you know, it's just smart thinking, you know, you got to move smart, especially if that's why bro, David, I got to say anyone who's been in the game as long as you, and anyone that I know that's in their low twenties and shit, I commend them because anyone had that kind of discipline and, and 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 say fuck clubbing, fuck being a degenerate. Like I'm gonna just do my my work. Like I'm all about the animals. Like dude, that's a that's a crazy commitment, but I understand that commitment. You know what I mean? It's it's just it's awesome. I I, I love seeing that. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I, I agree. It's not easy for a parent to, you know, we're we're immigrants, so we came to this country oh, with wow. nothing, and my parents, you know. Like most parents have aspirations of their kid going to university and doing these things and, and becoming a professional, whatever. And then you tell your parents you want to you wanna start a gecko business. They, um, it's not, that wasn't their first go-to thing, but they supported me the whole way. And, right. you know, even though they, it might have not been like their first choice of, of profession that That's they would have <laughs> for me, it, it worked out because they have yeah. always had their support. And I think that is... That gives me a, an advantage over a lot of people because some people, some people's families hold them back a lot just by oh, just yeah. simply by saying no, you shouldn't do that or no, that's that's not gonna that's not gonna make you a, a living or whatever. That holds people back, believe it or not, you know. So just encouraging right. people, and especially if it's your kids or your family members, it goes a long way. Yeah, you know what's crazy is like some of them are at the mercy of their parents because they, they have the roof over their head. That's how, yeah. you know, and, and, and like I said, I made the lifestyle for me where like, you know, for instance, you know, make a long story short, my mom and dad got split up when they were like, when I was like 14, 15 years old. And my dad had a job in Seattle. I'm born and raised San Diego, but my dad had a job in Seattle and I moved with him. And then after two years, my dad's like, Hey, I'm done. I'm going back to San Diego. And I'm like, well, fuck, I have a life up here. And I think I was 17 when he just dipped back down and I was up there by myself. And oh, I was wow. like, yeah. And I was like, dude, you know, cause like, I was going into college, you know, and, and I was like, you know, I'm on my own, but like, I realized like, you know, I could have just went home and, and just mind you, like something told me, you know, figure this shit out. If you really want to stay up in Washington and do your thing. And I had baseball opportunities. So I was like, dude, I'm like, I'm, I was already well known up there because, you know, any sports is political. Right. And I was doing really well up there. So it was really it probably would have been smarter financially for me to go down with my dad. But right. for what for what I like the personality, what 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 I learned on my own from 17 to 19 years old up there figuring shit out, bro. It made me realize I don't need nobody. Like I was like, oh, my God, like 
I'll fucking figure shit out. Like I'll figure it out. And you know, it just made me never want to go milk to my family, bro. Never. It just gave me the, it gave yeah. me a, a, it gave me a taste of independence that, you know, I got a lot of cousins. Shit. I got cousins four years younger than me. I'm 37. They still live at, they still live at home. God bless them. But you know, they got parents, they got money and yeah. they, they have that little nest like, Oh, fuck that, bro. Like I don't, but it's not a bad thing either. When you got parents who want to support you that much, you just got to right. turn it around. You just can't really waste it. Like, don't waste that type of thing. You know you what just I mean? Gotta, you got to you gotta play with the hand you were dealt, you know? 100%. And, Be smart. Smart people, moves. Yeah, some people, it will, some people, it will, you know, hurt them, and some people, it will catapult them up, you know? If that adversity, a lot of good stuff comes from adversity. If there's no adversity, there's no struggle, and it's going to be hard for anybody to become anything. So, so I don't care. I don't care what the business is. There's struggle behind starting any business. You go through some sort of learning curve. You go through some sort of like, oh, what the fuck? Why didn't I do this? Let's kind of talk about some of the beginning struggles during your maturing in the business world, you know, because, you know, you got in this game pretty young. I'm sure you learned a lot in the beginning. Let's kind of talk about your business maturity here. Yeah, so I mean, when you're starting off any business, it's gonna be uh, a high, a higher risk because you know nobody knows you. You're investing time and money into something that may turn out to be good, successful, or not. Yeah. I remember, man, there was when I first started. I literally would go to a reptile show and have a table full of geckos and not sell a single gecko. <laughs> so like, this is back in the like day. Like, I don't know, like over like ten years ago or so. And you, you know, it's pretty, it's discouraging at first, but if you, I always tell people, if you do this just based on the money that you can make or, or what you see on, on social media or whatever, like, oh, this guy has a million followers. This guy has that hundred thousand followers. And you think you're going to compare yourself where you are today to those person, those people, what, where they are now, it's just, you're going to set yourself up for failure because nobody starts off. Everybody starts off at zero. Everybody starts off with nobody knowing their name. And at first, the hardest thing is just acquiring customers and getting eyeballs on you, you know, because at, yeah. in this type of world that we live in, the, the main, the main, uh, like the most important thing that you could have is eyes on you. You want that attention. So it's a, it's a constant battle for attention. Every business Every, everything that involves like business is fighting for your attention, TV, movies, entertainment, selling geckos, you know, gym, whatever they're all, they need your attention. So that's the, that's the hardest thing I think right now. You know, it, it's so true when you say that, um, you know, because I feel like a lot of people, and if we could kind of talk about reptile shows and, and, and getting your feet wet in the reptile shows. A lot of people, especially, you know, I can only really talk from the ball python side of things because I'm, I'm very green with the with the geckos as far as that goes. But I'll, I'll, I'll kind of re re reference the ball pythons here. Um, you know, yeah. there's, uh, there's a handful of people who could go to every single reptile show and clear 30, 40 K. Like they could just they, they just have that. Uh, they have that following. People know that they're there. So they go and they fucking bring wads of cash. But then you have people who get a good table slot or not even just they get a table slot at, at a Tinley, right? And they think, oh, my God, this is Tinley. I'm going to fucking sell every single snake and I'm going to kill it. But then it doesn't happen. And a lot of them are so discouraged where they don't want to go back to a show ever again. And that 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 mindset needs a change, because how do you know? How do you not know who saw what you had that might be ready to buy like in like the next day or like the next week or some shit like it's all free. It's not free marketing because you pay for that table, but it's all marketing people yeah. and it's up to you to get an attraction like people need people need a reason to look at your table you can't just have things in a deli cup you can't just have fucking you know a plate of fucking reptiles and be like yeah come check me come check me out like dude have an attraction figure it out like that's like you know what i mean like have yeah. a reason why people should have eyes on you you know what i mean you got to make it happen like that yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it's uh, it comes back to that thing. It's attention. You and and yeah. you got to figure out your your animals might be the most beautiful animals in the world, but if nobody knows you have them, you're not gonna sell them. So you got to figure out how to talk. You have to be a good at marketing. You have to be all these things. You have to have a clean look, in my opinion. If you're you know gonna go to a reptile show and sell, 
And like you said, going to a reptile show, even if you don't sell what you thought you were going to, it's still good because you're meeting new people. You're starting to build connections and, and the relationships with other breeders. And that, that goes a long way. You know, a lot of people in this industry, I've met really, really good people, a lot of good friends in this industry, and 100%. they've helped me, you know, tremendously. So I think it's super important to, to get your hands, get your feet wet in the reptile shows, especially if you're starting off. Now we're we're in a world here, David, where it's kind of obvious how big the fucking you know how big the reptile world is because of social media. So it's kind of easy to connect with people, right? Yeah. Um, now let's talk about a date, a time when you started. Uh, how old are you? Do how are you? Remind me, how old are you again? I'm I'm right now. I'm 29. I started okay. when you no, know, I've had so, reptiles all my life, but I started the business like when I was 16 or so. So about seven years ago or eight years, eight years ago. Okay. So that, that's still, that's still well before what is happening now with the social media buzz. Okay. So I'm or, curious. Yeah, or, or it's, it's been over 10 years. It's been over 10 years. Yeah. My math is probably off. So yeah, yeah, uh, bro, bro, go back to school, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Uh, I suck at math too, bro. Don't, if you put yeah. me on the spot with a math problem, I'll fuck I was you. like, wait, I was like 19, 16. No. Yeah. So that's like eight years. Hello. No, it's like 13 <laughs> years. Oh, I'm an idiot. So I'm sorry. Uh, so, okay. So yeah, well before the buzz that is happening currently in the social media. So when did it click to you that you should start making good relationship moves with other people in the hobby? Like when, when did that like kind of seep, seep into your head? Well, as, as you start when, when I was, a, I'm pretty introverted. I consider myself introverted. So like when I started, especially as a young kid vending reptile shows, I wasn't like out here making connections and talking to everybody. But as I started to, you know, grow in the hobby and I started making YouTube videos, just I started making YouTube videos out of the necessity of like answering people's questions. Everybody would ask me questions and I thought it'd be easier just to send them a video than to type out answers every single time, you know. And 100%. as I started doing that more, I just started naturally meeting more people and those connections, you know, at the reptile shows, I would meet somebody they would see, you know, I'm serious. And then they would introduce me to somebody else or even just myself, just talking to different breeders and ask, asking questions, you know, like, oh, how did you, you know, where did you get this animal? How do you produce this? You know, and, and just asking questions and having that hunger to learn. That's what really, uh, that, that's what really makes a difference. Let's kind of help the people out there who are like, like, I don't, I don't think it's on purpose, but do you ever kind of read a DM, a question? It's kind of like, like, it's like they're demanding the answer. Not really demanding, but it's kind of like, whoa, like, dude, hold up. Like, whoa, relax here. Like, what's going on? You know, but I yeah. think it's, an, I think a lot of it is excitement. I think a lot of it is like, you know, they, they, they just kind of want to know what's happening. So let me ask you this, David, what is a good approach for anyone out there who doesn't know nobody? Let's say you're a complete, like non-known figure in the reptile game. You just got in and you're not really comfortable with approaching people. What's a good approach for you, David? You feel like if you're just brand new into this and you're you're trying to reach out to somebody, right? Well, well, obviously you don't want to. You you got to keep in mind people don't know who you are. So if you come across as like demanding information or demanding an answer, it's it comes off rude. You know, it comes just it comes back to just having basic, you know, manners. Courtesy. Cause a lot, common, a lot courtesy, of, common courtesy, right? Common courtesy and logic, man. I, I get a lot of that too. And it's just people like, hey, what's this? What's that? Or like, I'm like, dude. Or or I love all all I love everybody who, who messages me. I, I, I truly appreciate everybody who, who No, calls. you don't. No, you don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. But listen, but then I'll get people who who message me 16 different geckos. And they t they're like, oh, what what morphic are the all these geckos? And they're like, I'm like, why don't you just ask the person you bought them from? <laughs> like, why why are you asking me? But ask the person you gave the money to, and he's yeah. he should be able to tell you all the different morphs and all the questions. Like, I'm not gonna be able to, or if if their animals there's something wrong with your animal. Oh, I just got this animal. What's wrong with it? You should be asking the person you bought that animal from. I will yeah. I will certainly help you, but have some common sense. Yeah. You know, it, with that being said, I mean, if we could kind of talk about what you work with, and this is one thing about the ball Python game, which I'm happy for. I feel like 
if you can't keep a ball python alive, if there's if there's a gap missing, I feel like you shouldn't work with pets at all. Like that's a pretty like a straight that's a straightforward pet to keep as a ball python. Like it's really yeah. hard to fuck that up. And some yeah. people do, unfortunately. It's sad, right? And and and, it, and, it, and it's not really some people just don't have that eye, I guess. But you know, for the most part, geckos same thing pretty easy to keep it's not a hard animal to keep if you just listen to instructions everything's dialed in can we kind of talk about that like geckos are pretty easy for the most part yeah obviously it depends on the species but the majority of the geckos that we work with like the new caledonian stuff your crested gargoyle giant geckos that stuff that stuff is very easy and maybe i think ball pythons are maybe like a level it's, it's even easier than that because, you know, ball python you feed once a week or whatever. And, and once you have your rack set it's, or, or your enclosure set, it's, you pretty much don't really have to touch it unless you have to clean or whatever. Right. But geckos, the, the main thing that I think people get wrong with geckos is the humidity. Because some people think it gets – you need to keep them too wet, too humid, and then they, and then they it, when there's like 100% humidity all the time when the enclosure is super wet – it's, it starts to create infections. And then on the contrary, when you don't keep it humid at all, the gecko starts to have all sorts of problems. So, but yeah, the, but geckos, it's, it's a good beginner animal and it's a good way to, to test uh, basically your, your ability to keep reptiles. I mean, like I said, it's nothing against the person. And, and some people are just, I mean, let's, let's think about it. What's the people biggest problem? But I was going to say, bro, what's the biggest problem in this hobby right now is the people. The biggest problem that's fucking – and if we're kind of talking on what Florida's dealing with and U.S. ARC and all this shit, like it's because us, the fucking humans, we're the fucking problem. That's the problem, right? But Yeah. And, and there's those – they just don't care. They're just – they're really fucking bad for this shit. You know what I mean? But then you have the ones that just don't have like – you know. It's, I don't want to be mean, but like, they just can't connect the dots up here. Like they don't like, it's like, dude, you don't see that there's no water. Fill your fucking water dish. Like that yeah, type of thing. Exactly. You know what I mean? And those are the hard people because like I said, a lot of people latch on to this show. They latch onto your Instagrams, your YouTube, because if they like it, it feels good to them, you know? And then, and then some of them don't have too many reptile experience and they want to get into it, but they just, it's, not, it's just not meant for everyone. It, it, you know, and that's as much as it's growing, that's fine. But, you know, I, I just feel like some people, it's just, it's, it's tough, you know, and I feel bad for them. Yeah, I think that's just the unfortunate part about any business or anything that grows. Like our community has grown so much, but right. you're, the percentage of dumb people is going to grow with the expansion of the community. So it's just an unfortunate part of, of, of what's going on. But hey, yeah. if that's what, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. So I mean, it's what, like, it's like any business out there has good customers and bad customers. It's, you can't yeah. do nothing about it. It's just, you know, all, all we can do is create awareness, which, which is why, like, I'm very thankful for my podcast uh, because it, it does – I bring a lot of people on like yourself, people who I believe are doing the best in the game, and they give out their examples. And, you know, and not everyone's perfect either, David. You have a lot of people who come on this show and talk about things that they shouldn't do and they should never do. And and it's just like like looking out for each other, like, you know, passing down the – Passing down the knowledge, I feel like is, but the right piece of information, which, which I want to bridge to Animal Con, man. Let's let's talk about Animal Con real quick, um, because man, what a fucking good time! A great time to meet you and your brother. I think we're on a couple panels together, you and I, yeah. uh, where yeah, I asked yeah. you questions. It was it was fucking a good time, man. But let me hear it from you. What what is your overall take on Animal Con? It was fun, man. I think it has a lot of potential. I think Brian, you, you know, he has this vision of where this could go. And I think that if we, especially if once it starts to, the, once the ball starts rolling a little bit more, it's going to be something very, very big. So I'm excited to get that going, especially as our community grows, because just more, more and more people are going to have eyeballs on us and it's going to bring more, more people to that event. But I thought it was awesome, bro. The, the takeaway I had from that show was, you know, meeting people like you, meeting other influencers and people that we could collaborate and make videos or, or just information, share information. Because, for example, Kevin McCurley was there. I was asking Kevin McCurley a couple questions, picking his brain, picking, you know, Barcheck's brain. And, and it's just awesome, man. I, I love that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I got to tell you, man, I, I come, you know, I have a podcast 
obviously duh, we're fucking on it um uh, but like I, I i come from the snake world you know in the snake world very political but you gotta understand there's people like just people who don't like bar check you know and and and, and yeah, i, I and, and I love Barchek. Barchek's my boy. That's my brother, right? And I have people yeah. that like that, that, you know, they don't really give me shit, but they always like have that two cents at the end of the day. But I feel like, well, hold on. Have you even gone to Amazon? Have you met Barchek? These are all people who don't even know Barchek, right? So yeah. I feel like the biggest connection why going to Animal Con is if you have a problem with any influencer, like me, bro, like I don't, I'm not a fan of a lot of the influencers that were there. Like I just, I know things of them. I just because yeah. of, because of being in the podcast game and gathering information, I just know there's certain influencers influencers out there, David, that I don't fuck with. I don't respect them. Okay, so, but that didn't keep me from going. Like, it, you don't yeah. have to. Like, you don't have to go talk to those people if you you know stay in your lane if that's the case. And that's what I exactly. did. It's okay to disagree, man. That's the main it thing. It's like in, in today's world, people For can't what? even look or talk to somebody they disagree with. It's like you're fucking have a meltdown. Dude, <laughs> it's fucking pathetic, dude. I, I know of people that, like, didn't want to go because there's this person that's there and they don't like me. And I'm like, dude, grow the fuck up, bro. What are they going to do? They ain't going to do shit. I've said this, too, because I could tell you right now, this was the first Animal Con, and I could guarantee a lot of these people, maybe not all of them because of their pride, but a lot of these people will end up going because they know – It'd be stupid not to. Why wouldn't you want to connect yourself with something like this, bro? Exactly. Like, you know, it's no ant. Like, understand too. There's no ant as of right now. There's no animal sales, so there's nothing that's going to keep you from marketing. Like, it's all about marketing. It's all yeah. about linking up, going to fucking these panels. Which yeah. here's another thing. What, what I was going to get to, David, is like if you have a big problem with a lot of these influencers, and Brian invites you to come speak. Why wouldn't you want to come speak and talk what you feel is right? Like, this is your opportunity. Like, if you want to talk about, hey, man, there's too many people saying the wrong shit. But if you get invited to speak up and you don't want to take advantage of that, then you should shut up. Like, I don't yeah, – it's up. plain and yeah. simple. Like, they, I don't understand. Like, there's so many people that could have a say. Like, they, they maybe don't think they have a say. But if they were to attend these events and say shit, it will have a difference at some point in time, bro. And – you know, I had my dude, I had a couple influencers I couldn't stand that I were asking questions to. And yeah. I asked them good fucking questions. I asked them really, really difficult questions. Did I get good answers? No, I didn't. But I don't give a fuck. Like it's I still was there and I looked them in the eye and I asked them the questions that I had to ask them. But it like it shouldn't just be me. If you have a certain way on how certain people are teaching things in this goddamn industry, then you should speak up. Why don't you speak up? That's all. Exactly. It, it's, it comes down to being a professional and being a man about it. I mean, not to or be woman. like... Or a woman. But, you know, <laughs> or woman. Or being a person of, of character, let's say. Right. If, if, you, if you have a problem with somebody and you're going to talk all this crap online or if it's really that big of an issue, you should talk to them about it because you might find that they actually agree with you on certain things or they don't. Right. And if they don't, then it's fine. Like, who cares? But, you know, misery loves company, man. And some people just like being miserable. So there's just some people out there who choose misery. You know what I mean? And me, like, yeah. this is why I, I I don't mean to be so confrontational, but I don't like stuff eating me away. Like, I don't like stuff that's in my head that's, like, making me think. So if I need to speak to somebody on something, especially if it's somebody I'm close to, like, God damn, like, I don't let any of that shit, like, go away. Like, I we got to talk about it. There's a problem because that kind of shit that eats away at you and you don't speak up becomes a problem later on there's resentment that happens and 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 it's just it's just not a life to live it's not healthy to be like that it's really not yeah 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 yeah, for sure yeah. and and, it, and people have to uh i've seen like for for example with what you said that people hate bar check it's like i've seen people complain about like i don't know like the stupidest things about bar check about or any other influencer or whatever it's like dude do you think Everybody is, or do you think these people are perfect? Do you think they're not allowed to make mistakes? And are you perfect? Do you make mistakes? Because you're judging them like if you were Jesus himself or something. Like it's so crazy. Check, I have I have a reason behind every bit of energy behind anyone. Like the reason why I, you know, just so you know, the reason why I love Barcheck is because Barcheck is proven to be everything that he 
is not from all these people who've never met him and shit like that. You know, I've, yeah, I've yeah, hung yeah. out, I've, I've broken bread at this guy's table, man. I've seen his, seen his reptiles, nicest reptiles in the country, in my opinion. Like it's, it's so awesome how much he's evolved. Listen to what I just said. He has evolved. Yeah, exactly. He has evolved. Like he has become this icon, this somebody who is the leading front man in this industry, in my opinion. Brian Barczyk is that man living by it. You want to know because not only people in the reptile world, but outside the reptile world, he touches and inspires everyone who's not even inside the reptile world. You know what I mean? And that's – dude, my, my, my family who all – at thanksgiving they all asked me about brian barcheck and i'm like what like i was tripping out you know because like they're obviously googling shit they're obviously googling snakes now that i'm now they know that i'm doing and oh, they can't help but to hear about barcheck and that's you know what i mean but i the, you know and, and i, I want to keep this positive but there's other people where it's, that's not the same thing i've i've seen their shit it's terrible it's not it's just not what I like they're the ones that deserve not I don't want to say no one deserves hate. I don't I think that's a really harsh thing to say, but they're the ones that need to either fix their shit or have a little sit down or pow why which 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 okay damn David you ready to get into some shit right now? Let's go. Okay. Been ready. Right. So so here here's a problem, David, with me, right? As much as I just said there's a bar check that I like, there's 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 bar check, but then there's things that I don't like, right? There, there's a YouTube world. There's a, there's a level on YouTube, which I don't know what that's like. I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't know how many subscribers you have. Do you have millions of subscribers? Are you in that realm? We're, no, we're not. We're not there. We, we got 85, like 83,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's still sick as fuck. Oh my God. Okay. Please go subscribe. Tiki Geckos on YouTube. Get this guy to hundred K. I don't even have hundred K, but I'm just saying like, get this guy up to hundred K. But bro, understand that YouTube world where the money is like, whew, you know what I mean? And yeah. These, these, you know, without singling out anybody, the people who have been making the most money in the YouTube world, in reptile YouTube world, have been doing it when you could first, like, you know, we're talking about 2017 and shit, right? So yeah. imagine the money in 2017, like 2018, pre, like pre now, right? Right. Now, now the money is nowhere what it used to be. It's like YouTube is making it a lot more difficult for you to fucking go viral. Like, it's just not. It's not this laid out like, holy shit, look at the money. It's way diff different. But what it's doing is it's creating like people being desperate for content. You know what I yeah. mean? And, and that's the kind of shit I see. But at some point in time, it's like you it's like you having your brother um, or, you know, I'm sorry, not your but like your brother, but Manny, right? It's like Manny yeah. having – it's Manny, right? Did I say his name right, Manny? Just want to make sure. Yeah, Manny, yeah. Man, man. So Manny, it's like Manny having – his own collection at his house. You go over to his house and you're like, bro, there's fucking dead animals in this rack. Like what's going on? Like it's either you telling him to fix it or you just say, all right, man, listen, go ahead if that's what you want to do. But you know, you're making me look better by you looking this bad. So I'm okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's like, wouldn't you want to fix the problem and help your brother out right then and there? Like, and be like, yeah. yo, this isn't what you want to do. So what I'm seeing is I don't see that kind of help in the YouTube world. I feel like, no one is like telling anyone, hey, bro, you should fucking not put that content out. You know what I mean? Um, there are maybe, a, I don't know, I guess the only person I ever saw out there that was exposing shit like that was Donnie from Nerd. Like Donnie was putting it crate together this content. But like, I'm just saying, like, wh wh when do we come to a place where someone needs to talk to somebody because how much an effect it has all around? Like, like, like how bad some of this content isn't good for the non reptile keeper to see this is like, and I'm talking about the big issue with us arc and a lot yeah. of the problems that are happening in I'm this day and age. I'm following you, man. I'm following right, right. you. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I, I think you're right, man. I think sometimes just to not put somebody in an uncomfortable situation, people will like refrain from saying something. And I also think it, it comes down to like how well, you know, that person, uh, for example, like I've known a lot of people that maybe shouldn't, not necessarily like YouTube people, but just to put it into perspective, like people that I know have animals that, uh, should be taken care of a little bit better. And because I do have that level of confidence, I could, I, the way I do it is like, I tease people. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> like you're, you know, like I I'll tease you to death about it basically. And that's yeah. how I kind of like let that be known. <laughs> You know, like I'll, I'll fucking roast you for having no water in your iguana's cage or whatever. But uh, I, I know a lot of people that don't want to say anything because they don't want to get on 
they don't want to get on bad terms with that YouTuber or person that is, you know, has a big following and you want them to be on your good side or you want, you want to be on their good side. And I think that's at the end of the day, hurting the hobby and hurting the animals more than, than like it's deserved. Obviously it's not, it's not, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's just like human nature. People don't want to get uncomfortable sometimes. Well, it's very political too. You know, it's like you said, it's, um, there's, it's like, okay, why, why say something to somebody when they know it and they're not going to fix it. So I'm just going to just, I'm going to shut the fuck up because if you keep poking at something and that person has power in some sense of putting you on, then, you know, you're just going to let things slide or a lot of its sense is them making shit that you want to buy or something like that. But, you know, I I mean, I get it. I understand that, but I can't help. I I love an animal too much to see it neglected. If I see it neglected and, and, and and you don't want to change it. And if it's like, dude, what the fuck? Like, then I I take it because I dude. I got to tell you one of how I became a dog lover. Like I, you know, it's funny. I I remember what made me a reptile lover. It was dinosaurs. Just like you said, I literally remember toy down dinosaurs is what created that first obsession. But you want to maybe made me obsessed with dogs was when I was like four or five years old walking in the hood. And I saw like a pit bull neglected. I saw like a pit bull, like really fucked up. And it was like whimpering. And as a kid, it gave me nightmares. I felt so bad for that animal. Like, you know what I mean? And obviously I kept seeing dogs not being kept right throughout the whole, you know, childhood, but it just, I felt in love with a dog, you know, and, and, and you know, God bless a dog, bro. You a dog is one of the best animals on earth because oh, no, yeah. nothing, nothing loves you more than a fucking dog, you know, like no. These reptiles, no offense. These reptiles did not love us. Okay. A fucking no, no. A dog loves us. You know what I mean? So, and I knew that. So, but that I'm luckily that instilled in my heart at that age, you know what I mean? But that that neglect shit just never worked with me, even with reptiles, man. It just like it's they're not choosing to be in this fucking box. Yeah. They're not choose yeah. like you know they're not even, like you know, even a dog, dude. A lot of dogs are you know hello. I didn't ask to be here, but you know it's an animal. It's like, it's like a God's gift for sure, in my opinion. I'm not trying to get holy, but I'm just saying like it's just like a gift for us to like therapeutically enjoy and like like you know like this room bro i could come in here so stressed out and after a few minutes i'm just like all right i figure shit out like i write things down in this room like everything just calms me down bro and like that's that's a gift you would have to say right for a human yeah yeah i dude honestly a lot of us who knows where would we what would we be doing if it wasn't for animals so i am you know, I love, I love all animals. Like you were saying, I, I tell my girlfriend all the time, I'm like, yo, I didn't know what true love was until I, met, uh, until I got my dog. <laughs> Cause that, I just, my first dog, I got it like uh, two, two and a half years ago that my very first dog ever. And I just love, she's right here. And I love her to death, man. It's something so. different, bro. It's, it's a, I mean, God it's bless crazy. dogs, bro. I mean, I'm, I'm 37. <laughs> dogs. Dog I have back for his dog. <laughs> <laughs> for real yeah no that's no shit huh god equals dog come on that's probably a piece of god i'm telling you that's why you should i don't understand I, there's a special place for any animal abuser especially a dog abuser after no, this no. life and, and i got dude man they're god bless her soul man but um all right listen i want to get back on the business talk of things because black friday um you know you were, we're just coming off of black friday which your specials are going all weekend or let's kind of talk about your black Friday specials and how that's been keeping up with sales and, and, you know, basically what your black Friday is all about and whatnot. Yeah. So our black Friday, I can hear you. Was, keep talking. I can hear you. Keep talking. Okay. Okay. So our black Friday was basically, it was like a week long event for our email subscribers. We had discount codes that kept increasing leading up to black Friday and our big black Friday day, it was basically just 50% off crested and gargoyle geckos, 20% off everything else. And that was our, you know, that's our biggest sell of the year. So for like, we typically don't do Cyber Monday stuff. The The event ends on Friday at 11.59 p.m. But, you know, we we were able to sell, we sold almost everything. So, you know, it's, it's always been um, very, very, we do a lot of work and a lot of promo for black Friday. So it's been a good, uh, it's been a good year for that for sure. But, um, yeah, dude, black Friday is, I think this like in, in the United States is the biggest 
holiday and the biggest opportunity for a business because people are just in the in this frenzy of like they just want to get deals and buy everything so if you give the people what they want you know you're gonna you're gonna be able to make some good money but um obviously this year has been a little bit slower because of you know the how the economy has been but it's it's it was still a very good year for us yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, man, because I'm curious how this Black Friday has been compared to other Black Fridays. Like, is this something that you're like, this is like nothing you're brand new at. This Black Friday thing that you roll out is something you've been doing for a few years now, or, or how's that been? Yeah, yeah, we, we've we been, we we were the first ones to do 50% off crested geckos and stuff like that. And now, to like this year, I've seen like four different sales that say 50% off crested geckos, so... Uh, I, when I started doing this a couple years back, I don't remember anybody else doing it. I kind of was like, fuck it. I'm just going to like, I'm going to blow this shit out of the water. I'm going to like really give people good deals. And, and then, and last year we did 50% of our gargoyle geckos as well. Cause typically gargoyles are a little bit more expensive and they're not as, as, uh, they're not as easy to re like, they're easy to breed, but they're, they don't produce as much as crested. So people usually don't do really good deals on them. But I said, fuck it, let's do 50% off, off of them too. And we completely sold out last year, like all crested, all gargoyle geckos. And it's been, ever since I started doing it, it's been our best day of the year. This is when I know we have a lot of gecko people in the building because God bless them. They're not used to this. But hey, guys, there's no way we have over 70 people tapped in and only 40 likes. This man deserves a way better ratio than that. Can we please get the likes up for the homie David? Go. Dude, let's go right Come now. On. Let's get the likes up. He does not deserve that ratio, but it's okay. Dude, we're spitting fire. People are just like tuned in and they're forgetting. So if you forgot, it's no big deal. It's never too late. Things are just cracking. So why don't you hit that like button right now for the homie David? I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, you know, listen, a lot of people I could tell you right now, man, are freaking out, you know, especially people who've been selling reptiles for the last two years and had a pretty good run. But now – we're at a point where, like you said, people are being a lot more frugal with their money. They're, they're like, whoa, you know what I mean? Especially recurring customers. I had some customers where I'm like, fuck, you still here, man? Like, where are you at? And it's like, yeah, I mean, you know, they're just, it's just a different time, you know? Um, how do you, how do you adjust for something like that? Especially for anyone out there new, anyone out there who's panicking right now, how do, how can you, what's some advice for adjusting for something like this? So I would say that you really have to be careful how much money you're investing in certain projects. Now, there's always going to be a good time to invest in certain animals or morphs, and there's always going to be a bad time. Typically, what I find is that when you have to understand genetics a little bit, for example, like an incomplete dominant mutation, it's going to be easier to reproduce. You can reproduce it in one generation, so a bunch of people are going to be able to make it. If that particular animal that is happens to be an incomplete dominant is super expensive right now, I would stay away from it just because it's you're probably not going to get the same return that you're hoping for unless you're like one of the very first people who start breeding that. But um, because I see a lot of a, a lot of animals that are going for crazy amounts of money right now because the the market has been with the geckos the market has been inflated by all the customers out overseas in Asia and stuff. So these right. guys are paying top money for a lot of our geckos here. And it's causing us here in, in the United States to increase that price. Cause if our U S customers want to compete with our Asian customers, they're going to have to pay what they're paying. You know, I much rather sell it to somebody here because it's just easier to ship it to them and everything. There's no export, whatever, but if they're paying me twice as much, I'm going to sell it to them over there. So, but, but going back to what, what the question was, hey, can, can you want to, can, can we just, you know, just for your own sake of anyone trying to blow you up, he meant his customers in Asia, not his Asian customers. You know, you got hella Asian customers in America, bro. They're going to be coming yeah, after yeah. you. Don't even yeah, like, yo, yo. You. <laughs> Sorry. <I'm laughs> um, so yeah, like you don't, don't invest crazy amounts of money and, and uh, know the market. That's the main thing. Know, yes. know the market. Yeah. If something is super buzzing, if it's super expensive, it's probably not the best time to get into it. 
There's certain animals that are not as buzzing right now that maybe have died down in popularity, but they're good quality animals. They have a lot of potential. You know, they're right. easy to keep. They come in a variety of colors and patterns. You know, they're easy to maintain. And if you, if those animals are lower right now, then it's a good time to invest in them because, you know, once the economy starts to pick up, those, those prices are going to go with it. Actually, just today, we, we put out a video talking about some of the best and the worst uh, reptile investments you can make right now. We literally just posted that today. So that's is funny. That, that. Is, that, is that around geckos and, and, and species or just talking about any reptile in general? Talking about reptiles, we, we pointed a couple out and we just thought we talked about some that we thought were good investments and some that we thought were bad investments right now. Wow. Okay. Um, and so I have to ask, I, 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 I just pulled up your YouTube channel. Um, I have to ask you what, what, what's, you know, obviously with, uh, and you guys to kind of get the full 411, please head over to his YouTube channel. But what was your guys' biggest take on the number one reptile not to invest in right now, according to your video? It comes down to the price of it. Like so high, end animals, price, high, end, high end shit you're saying. Yeah. Like, like, uh, this is again, this is just my opinion from my experiences, but right, right. a certain animal, if it's worth, you know, twenty thousand dollars and it's like a crested gecko, something very easy to reproduce, and it could be reproduced in the first generation, that price is gonna come down pretty quick. Especially in an economy where it, it starts to get a little bit iffy, you know. If people are having a hard time just getting money from they get laid off or whatever they're the last thing they're going to do is invest in reptiles they're going to want to put money on uh food on the table for the family so it people got to be careful with what they um what they invest in because i know a lot of people that will spend their life savings on these animals and sometimes animals are not the best uh like investment just because there's so much that could go wrong you you could buy an animal and then it something happens, it, you know, it, it doesn't make it or it just doesn't want to breed for you or, or whatever the case may be. So in times like this, you really got to be careful. You really got to know what you're doing if you want to get into like really breeding reptiles and selling high end animals. Yeah. It's, I mean, at the end of the day, coming in a brand, here, dude, here's my biggest thing, bro. It's like you got some people who come across any piece of information that they run into they like the idea. They have money to throw down, but they get yeah. so far ahead of themselves, you know, and and yes. and you know, invest in equipment and they have brand new freedom reader racks. Shout out to the fucking sponsor. But I'm just saying, like, you got all these thousands of dollars, and then what? Your job, you lose your job, or you get a, you get a divorce, or something happens, and then you have like, you know, it just so much could happen within those first few years. Shit, anything can happen. I mean, period, right? But after a few years of establishment and you got your feet concreted down. You could handle any life situation that comes to you at that point. But it's it's just the first couple of years. Like, like there's no point of just overdoing it. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah, know. that's that that's dude. When I first started, that was one of the biggest things I would see. I would see people, I would have customers buy a bunch of geckos. They'd ask me, Oh, what's the best morph to get into? What's the best this to get into? I'm like, listen, you barely know how to take care of one animal and you want to buy 20 off of me. I don't think you should do this. Like you should slowly build your collection, learn the animal, have and, – and the most important thing is do it out of passion because the second that it's not going good, you're going to say fuck it and just leave all these animals and, and then want to like dump them all. It's not it, – at the end of the day, the animals are the ones that are not going to benefit from that and you're just going to lose your – you're going to waste time and money. So it's – take it slow. Like that's like the main thing, taking it slow. And mm -hmm. in a time of, you know, a recession or something, if you've had bad business practices, if you're already a person that people aren't having a, you know, if they don't want to deal with you, but they buy from you anyways, because you might have something they want. The time of the recession is going to weed you out because yeah. people are then really not going to buy anything from you. And you should obviously have some sort of, morals when you're doing business because it, it it'll come back and bite you in the ass i've seen it time and time again people think you know they're gonna pull a fast one on somebody 
and then it comes and bites them in the ass in the long run. I mean, people talk too, bro. Like, here's the thing. Like, there's there's people who, like, yeah, they, they may seem dumb. Like, they may seem like, okay, you, you got one up on them, but they make silent moves and don't include you ever again. You know what I mean? And, yeah. they, and, 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 and that's why that coming back and biting you in the ass. But here's another thing too, bro. The biggest problem for a lot of people who don't evolve, who've been in this game for a while, like let's just say people who've been selling snakes for a while and they sold so many snakes where their customer service is just dog shit. Like they just don't give a yeah. fuck. Mm -hmm. Those those are the motherfuckers who are going to get weeded out here pretty, 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 pretty soon. They're the already one. Yeah. They can't even wholesale their shit. Like there's, I'm hearing stories and this is just ball Python references, of course, because all I really know when it comes to this deep up reading, um, I, I got to tell you, man, like there's people who just, people don't want to give them business. They don't want to fucking give them the money. And um, man, that goes down to just not having any kind of because dude at the end of the day someone's gonna need somebody to, to to lean on we all need somebody to lean on in this shit like like i, I mean it'd be nice if you don't right but why do you want to be in that position why do you want to be in a position where you're like well fuck i don't need nobody i'm mr king of that you never know when you're gonna might gonna have to like you know have yeah, to no, ask no, for no. that favor and, 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 and if you go ahead sorry that I'm, i just wanted to say that kind of mentality won't take you far that kind of mentality is what you, it's gonna it's gonna leave you with a blind spot, and then before you know it, everybody right. else is gonna whiz past you, and you're gonna right. be left behind because you think it's just an ego thing. Like, oh no, I'm good. I I I've been in this thing for 20 years, and da 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 da. da. No, you got to keep evolving with the times because the next generation don't know who the fuck you are, and the next generation they they really don't care. So unless you like make it known and you're out there and and constantly helping people. And not just relying on your name, you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to get smoked. I'm very blessed for my homies in this, bro. Like my most closest friends in this game are so realistic with me. And, and I'm some, I'm very prideful, bro. Like I, like I, I'm a, like, I have to check myself because like, first and foremost, the animals, it's about the animals. Right. So like, I, I don't want to be cocky about the shit that I have because I feel like I do have rare shit. But I have homies who just make me feel like you should just be blessed with what you have because that shit could be gone tomorrow. And this right. is coming from people where it's happened to them. You know, like one of literally one of my best friends who's one of the youngest guys, but most experienced guy in the game, Andrew Acevedo. I'll talk about Andrew all the time. He's like, I have to hype him up. Like, I'm like, bro, like this is amazing. But he does his, he just doesn't get hyped over anything because he's had disaster happen to him. And he just enjoys what he has before it's gone. And that's kind of like it's, it's it's kind of like wow that's kind of a sad mentality to have it's kind of like a safe bet to have too like just do right and do what you have and enjoy what you have because i mean how many fires do you hear about how many disasters yeah. do you hear happening throughout the country bro even throughout the world you just never know when it's over dude you never know yeah. it's sad yeah. to talk about i don't want to get depressed over it. i'm just saying <laughs> It's fucking, it's just the realistic thing. So I tried to like, what I'm trying to say is like, people need to check their egos. Like they need to like, stop thinking you're Mr. Fucking sick because you have cool animals. That's cool. But keep them alive and keep your shit good. Keep your shit, like worry about the animals before you start making yourself trying to look good. If that makes sense. Yeah. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. 100%. Now, you know, at the end of the day, man, people, man, I got people. It's so funny, man. Some of the highest big dogs in the breeding game and the ball Python game have two different ways of looking at things. Like, you know, you have Justin from Canova reptiles who is just creating a bunch of fucking, just like, you know, I want to say little mini versions of him, but not really just like people who are trying to make next shit level. Like, like, I mean, next, next level shit with this stuff. Right. Um, oh, yeah. But you know, you also have some people who are like looking to retire. Like they're just like, dude, fuck my nine to five. I want to be able to do this full time. I see what Justin does. I want to be that. You know what I mean? I, I see Miguel. I, I see, you know, Aussie Boyds and, and like, you know, they see these people that are doing this full time, you know, but then you have other people who are like, that's not what to do. That's a triangle. That's a pyramid scheme. That's not fucking smart. All this other stuff. Um, you know, I want to know about when it comes to you giving advice for somebody who comes to you saying, hey, David, and it could be somebody that you believe in. Who knows? I'm just saying if they're like, hey, David, I want to do this full time. I hate my job. Fuck my job. I'm depressed. What do I need to do? What would be your advice? What would you say to someone? Yeah, I mean, it, it's honestly, like like I said earlier, you have to really go with your passion. And if you're doing it for the money, I don't think you're going to 
have a have a future in this just because the amount of work that it takes is not worth it simply if you're not if you don't actually care about the animals because there's a plenty of other businesses plenty of other jobs that you could do that will make you a lot more money for the amount of time that you put in these animals obviously don't know it's christmas they don't know it's thanksgiving they don't know you know you want to go on vacation so a lot of times you can't do all that stuff because you know i can't even tell you the last time i i I don't even know when I've taken like a week vacation. I don't, I, I literally can't even remember when I take a vacation, it's like one or two days here, one or two days there, because I have animals. I have to take care of a bunch of animals. I have a business to run. And when you're dealing with dry goods, you could just leave it there, forget about it, you know, go to Fiji, whatever. But when you're, <laughs> when you're working with animals, there's no way you could do that because there's just so much that could go wrong. If, Especially if you keep animals that with variety, if you keep a variety of animals, a lot of people don't know how to take care of it, each individual species. So a yeah. lot could go wrong if you leave it into the hands of somebody. So my biggest advice to those people would be to know what you're getting yourself into. The work is nonstop, but it's, it's satisfying and it's possible if this is what you truly love. If this is what you want to do. 100% there's an avenue to doing it, but you have to, you have to give your life for it. You have to, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you're not going to get to do. You may not get to go party on the weekends with your friends or whatever, because you have to feed your snakes or whatever. So it's, uh, it's definitely possible. And I always tell people, listen, you, you see, there's people like me, you know, bar check, there's, there's MJU, you're starting to do this full time and all these things. And, this is a possibility. Everybody starts somewhere and eventually it gets to a point where they could do this full time, but it takes a long time and it takes a lot of work. And it, it takes a certain individual too. Like you, you have to yeah. be, you have to be built for shit to go wrong. Like here's the thing, people, there's certain people that are cookie cutter people. What I mean by that, they want to create the most perfect situational world possible. They want like everything uh -huh. to go right. They're there's, like, they don't want, they don't want, they don't want struggle. And, and that's the thing, bro. I, I am not going to lie. Like it's, it took me to long, like, even though I was, even though I was, I come from a strong sports background, I never really liked working out until I got older and I, till I wanted to fucking to look good. And then I was like, Oh, okay. Now I want to work out. Right. But even working out, it's like, it's work. It's never, it's something that you shouldn't, not always want to do it, but that's when you do it. Like you have to do it even when you don't want to do it. And I didn't learn that kind of habit in life until I came into the reptile world. Because like I said, what do I love? Animals. So if animals need water changes, if animals have shit in their tub, if animals need to eat, they need it to my, there's no fucking fuck you. I'm going to go do my thing. I can't like, for me, I don't, I, I can't sleep. I can't be normal. My whole world yeah. is rocked. If these things are not taken care of, bro, my whole world is rocked, bro. It's, uh, it's, and even my wife knows, like, it's like, that's why vacations are hard for me sometimes, you know, like if not hard all the time, I can't always just leave and just, you know, like it, it's tough, bro, but it takes a certain individual, bro. Not everyone has it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. 100%. But it's, I feel uh, like, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, it's, it, it takes that, that type of person that you love it so much that you almost love it more than, than you love yourself because you're willing to sacrifice a lot of what you want to do for what they need. That's why, you know, dude, I know I could have done things differently for this platform, but my Instagram, like, I could be a lot more child-friendly. I could do things where I could attract, like, but I'm very like, nah, I'm doing my thing. I don't give a fuck, even though I do care, but I do me because I don't ever want to break my personality. I don't ever want to break who I am, right? Because yeah. imagine, imagine how much energy people have to put on when they are pretending to be something they're not for their videos or they're like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like th th that, that fake persona, like meaning like, okay, you, you turned it on because the camera's on, but really when the cameras are off, what are you about? And it's not the same energy. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and bro, cause dude, you know, this, that YouTube shit and animal care taking all that together is a, that's a lot of work, bro. Like if you don't have a team, I don't know how you're doing it. You have to have a team. I feel like. 
Yeah. Yeah, I you mean, do. When you get to a certain uh, uh, level of how many, an- like, certain, when you pass a threshold of, like, a certain amount of animals, you need a team because there's no way you could do it by yourself. And, and that being said, like, how, I want to know how you and your relationship works out in the business between you and the homie Manny. Like, what is it that he's strong with? What is it that you're strong with? What are, what are your duties? What are his duties? That type of thing. You there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. You cut out for a second. What was up? You're, you're in my question or no? No, I didn't. I just heard uh, how it works out and then you cut out. Yeah, so I was, gonna, I was curious with your relationship in the business with you and Manny, right? Like what, what is it yeah. that you're good at? What is it that he's good at? What are your responsibilities? What are his responsibilities? Like how do you guys delegate that between you and him? Yeah, so Manny does a lot of the animal uh, caretaking. He does a lot of the feeding a lot of the, you know, just waters, things like that. He also like does a, the morph market when, when we're working here. What I do mostly is I do, I do most of the the stuff dealing with the marketing. Um, I work. We both do like the shipping when it comes to the business. We have a team of five people here, but what he does the most is just animal caretaking. What I do the most is just figuring out how to make the business grow. So that right. would be, you know, marketing or, or whatever else I have to do. And, and then, I don't know, man, because there's a lot of different key components you should do when it comes to wanting to get your name out there. And a lot of people feel like they could just breed animals. It's like the people who just put animals in deli cups at shows and put their hands up like, all right, sell. Like, well, dude, hold on. Who, what have you been doing like to even put yourself out there, right? Um, what are some of the important feel like what like what are some advice or some key points for you when it comes to like good advertisement for yourself? Like how are or what are certain habits you should certainly like go off of in the beginning when coming into this game that you will that will help you in the long run when it comes to marketing? You have to be very aware of the world around you. You have to be very aware of how social media works. You have to be aware of the trends. You have to be aware of how, what people are reacting to, you know? So for example, like YouTube shorts or like the new uh, easy to digest little clips of videos, that kind of stuff is getting pushed out a lot because a lot more people's attention spans nowadays is no secret, it's getting shorter. So if you, you know, if you are filming a video and you're very monotone you're very boring people are not going to want to watch at all you have to be you have to have some sort of energy with to you or you have to provide some quick information that they could you know digest and and then that they can remember so you have to definitely just it, it comes down to being aware of what's going on and learning the social media learning the the advertising learning the hobby and the culture and that's what's going to take you a long way when it comes to like the marketing and stuff yeah i mean i don't know i feel like a lot of people don't take that in consideration because they do have a nine to five they do have a a busy job where they can only do so much but if you're looking to part ways with that nine to five if you really want to have that be a possibility then you need to start treating this shit like a full-time job as much as you can and that yeah. part of that, that part of that it's the marketing taking pictures posting every day like people don't know how important it is to post every day if you're yeah. trying to get any kind of instagram following and you're not posting every day then you're fucking definitely you definitely shoot yourself in the foot for sure yeah and and like i said you gotta you gotta stay up to date with what's going on like for example with instagram nowadays if you post a regular photo, it's not going to do great for you. You need a, what's yeah. moving the most, what's getting the most eyeballs are the reels. So, and then, yeah. you know, next year it might be something else. So you just got to be aware of what's going on and, and follow the trends and follow the, the, the way the social media platforms are taking the, the platform. I mean, what are her, I mean, what are some of the things that you do to kind of make, make yourself on top of, maybe certain things to breed for the year. Like, because I mean, first and foremost, how many different species of geckos do you work with altogether? <laughs> Bro, that's a good question that I don't know the answer to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, 
we work with a lot, bro. We work with at least uh, that we actually breed probably like around 10 different species that we actually breed that we sell. Oh boy. We, we have, you know, probably like 30 different species of geckos that we sell. And then sometimes we'll have one, sometimes we have another. So it's always changing. Yeah. I mean, what about as far as letting certain projects go, does that happen every year too? Or do you guys pretty much stick with certain shit all the time? Like how's that being worked out? So it, it depends on the project. Like, for example, we have, when it comes down to like crested geckos or gargoyle geckos, that's, just, that's my bread and butter. That's what people know me for. And that's what I love the most. So that's not something I would let go. But within like the crested gecko world, like there's certain morphs that I specialize in more or that I want to focus in one year versus another. So I'll put more attention towards that. But we, you know, sometimes you do have to make that hard decision of letting go of your least favorite project because uh, you won't we you just won't be able to to breed everything you want you know i think you know uh that if you want you know you, you might want all kinds of different localities of green tree pythons or all kinds of different you know boas and different boa morphs or whatever the case may be you just simply can't follow all these projects there's not enough time or, or money in the world to help you do that so you got to focus on a couple different species man God bless the ball pythons for me, though, man. I, I got to say, if it wasn't for the ball pythons, I wouldn't have this room right here. This is this is my, my dream slash nightmare room. And what I mean by that is my most anticipated projects, my most sought-after animals are in this room, right? Yeah. But my least success is in this room. And my most yeah. death, my most death happens in this room. <laughs> yeah and yeah. you know because like bro like obviously i am seeking shit that isn't easy to do i that's what i want like you know but also yeah. it's it's with stuff that i love you understand these green tree pythons these emerald tree boas these go back for me when i was in like in, in first grade looking at a zoo magazine like obsessed like and and, and i never thought animals keeping animals like this back when i just had a ball python i didn't think this was a feasible thing but now it turns out that this is one of the most in the snake world this is one of the most difficult things to fucking produce and keep oh, alive yeah. it's a nightmare but it's but you figure it out like you, it's trial and error bro just like anything else take the yeah. good with the take the good with the bad right um but i wouldn't be able because dude money obviously i don't want to get into figures but goddamn money right it's caging all this is money but it all came from something that showed me what i loved but you know like the ball python game i will never get rid of the ball pythons bro that is my bread and butter I am so thankful for the ball python game. Even right now, even though my morph market is uh, got spider webs on it, um, I, I got to say, I'm not complaining. I'm prepared for shit like that. I, I'm somebody who always knows you should have multiple hustles. You should never just sit yeah. on one. You should never just sit on one thing. But that even goes with, if you want to do this full time, one of my biggest things I try to tell the homies, David, if I have someone I'm close with that's doing good with ball pythons and every now and then they'll be like, hey, MJ, when are you going to produce green trees? You know, let me know when you have some. I'm like, bro, I don't know when that's going to be, but why are you waiting on me? Like, get into it. If you really want to get into it, get into it because that kind of taste of appreciation when you go from something you're so good at and then you kind of get kicked in the balls and you're like, but like, isn't, isn't that kind of what pushes you forward? Like, that's... Like you just, some people just need a little bit of appreciation when they get complacent with certain things. I feel like. I don't yeah, know. yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's what, when, when it comes easy to you, it's not, you don't, you don't seek it as much when it's something that's difficult. You have that challenge or you want to figure it out. That's when it, that's when it gives you the extra motivation you need. I mean, it just kind of keeps, you know, keeping your mind ticking, you know, like the guessing game. I love the guessing game, bro. Like that's, that's why I don't have, I don't have, I don't have an ultrasound. Like, you know, like I should have an ultrasound, you know, because it does kind of help you when it comes like in the snake world. Like when you have a male want to go to multiple females, you got to make sure the female's oh. ready and whatnot, right? The follicle build. But I like using this sometimes just because I'm like, it's like, it's like, you just don't know. Like, I like that feeling of anticipation of like, you don't know, but I'm not going to lie, bro. Now these clutches that I'm looking to hit are like 10, 15, 20 K. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> the whole, like, you know, fuck the guessing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. 
No, but I mean, I, dude, I wish you the best of luck. I have so many friends that that uh, that try green trees or, or emerald tree boas, and they are not easy. So kudos yeah. to you if you can hatch those, man. Good luck. Day by day, man. Um, I mean, yeah. I don't know what is what. Can we talk about a species that you work with? That's your biggest like thorn, I guess you could say, like the one that's like always keeping you on your toes. Um, honestly, right now, as far as the stuff we breed, we have it pretty. You have it pretty locked down. We've been breeding for, God, over 10 years. But the, there's always new challenges that, that come across. Like, for example, our first – so I, I recently got a property and I started getting some cyclora, the, the, like the big iguanas, the rock iguanas. Right. And for whatever reason, this year we produced a bunch of eggs, but um, most of the eggs went bad. And we barely hatched anything. And, so, and another one, and one of my females, you know, she wasn't, she didn't lay. She, I saw her get bread, but she never laid. So now I'm like trying to figure out what could I do to make sure that next year they do breed. And it, there's always something that it's a little off that if you fix, you know, then you'll get the fertility and, and the eggs that you want. But yeah, it, I think right now the, the hardest thing are those cyclora, the, the, the rock iguanas, rhino iguanas, and the Lewisai hybrids. Yeah. I, I'm mean, a lizard guy, bro. I know you're a snake guy, but I'm a lizard oh, guy. Oh, no. No, no, homie. I got laces. I'm, I'm with you, bro. I got I – oh, got... oh, you got lace monitors? Yeah, so I got green tree Damn. monitors. I got I got green tree monitors that are locking up right now. Those look good. She actually gave me her first clutch in January, but they were, they were, uh, de they were uh, duds. They weren't good, but – my, yeah, I got Bell Face Lace Monitors, Mac Dre and Alice. I got a pair of those. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll be pairing them up, I think, in spring, springtime, bro. They're, I've had them for over – going on two years now. So it's it, – oh, cool. Bro, listen, I, awesome. I I love the lizards, bro. I, I got to tell you, I'm not going to lie to you. You want, you want to know a secret, bro? Obviously, it's not a secret if I say it right now for everyone. But right, Between you and me, between you and me. Between you and me. Okay, ear, earmuffs, guys. But, dude, if it's up to me – Maybe other than what's in this room, but in that, so I have this room, then I have the trap, which is all the ball pythons, scrub pythons, my retics. I have all my big snakes are over there, right? But I have all my monitors in there too. If I were ever in that place and I knew financially I don't need the ball pythons the way I did, that whole room would be monitors. I would get rid of, like, no offense. I These are the only snakes I need. I need monitors, bro. I'm obsessed. But here's the thing. I want dwarf monitors. I want geckos someday. I'm not going to lie, bro. I <laughs> have the itch. I have the lizard itch, bro. I want I want to be more lizard heavy than snake heavy when the time is right. Like I said, I can't. The ball python game is too sweet to me right now. I'm doing I'm doing big time shit with the ball python stuff. I yeah. haven't even I'm not even close to peaking it, which I don't think anyone will be in the ball python game. That's why I love it. But there's so much to come with the ball python game. I'm just thinking years down the road, like when I'm older, like, you know, when I'm in my fifties, yeah, I'd rather yeah, just, yeah. I'd rather just have monitors, bro. And just be that, be that be like, like Kevin McCurley and just have a bunch of tame monitors all around. <laughs> uh, I could think of other people I'd rather be. No offense to Kevin. I love him, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I, I just like, dude, I, I just love Our the, parts. I love the appreciation a monitor gives you like the, like, like They're it's so like, smart. They fucking look you in the eye. You know when it's a good day or a bad day. Like you just like, all right, like cool, man. Like it's fuck. It's like a live. It's like a dog, bro. Like literally, yeah, yeah, my yeah, they're, they're like, smart. dude, they're so smart, man. And um, but you know what's crazy is like maturity is everything, and they're gaining into that next level of maturity. I split them up now. They're kind of wondering where they're at, but then you know it's just the next level of breeding. And this is where I don't know if I'm meant for this yet. I don't know. The green tree monitors right. is one thing, man. But the the, the 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 laces, I'm very like – this is like knowing my kid's going to lose his virginity or something. Like I'm very nervous <laughs> about this, bro. Like it's – Bro, so I went to uh, Ron St. Pierre's place not too long uh, – I think like like last uh, – no, no, it was this year, but earlier this year. And he's – you know, he's bred all kinds of lace monitors and all kinds right. of monitors and all kinds of reptiles and stuff. He was telling us how he keeps his outside here in Florida. I don't, mm -hmm. He doesn't have them anymore, but he did. And it's hot as fuck here, bro. But right. he would even put a, hot, a heat box outside for them because they like it really, really fucking hot. And that's what every, every, monitor, bro. every monitor person was telling me that you need to have them get super fucking hot for them to, to do good out here or, or to breed, 
to breed in general because um but yeah but the, the lace monitors bro do you do you got the the kimberly no i don't so here's the bell yeah the, yeah so they, they came from sim container my boy alex and uh, john yeah. over at Sim container they're uh separate different clutches um but both came from a bell to bells pairing right so they're technically okay. They should carry, which a lot of monitor keepers don't like the term super bells, but basically the bells that are like pink and shit like that, that come out pink looking. Yeah. That's, that's what I should be going with that. But I got to tell you, man, like I said, I love the bells. I, I love the bell face, but my next, my next move, like one of my biggest uh, monitor keepers, I mean, I got a couple, but one of the guys out there that I respect the most um, is Brian Waterloo. Do you know who Brian Waterloo is? I don't fuck guys gangster as fuck but he has these black laces bro like they're just pitch black and and not pitch black but they have like these tiger stripes on them like it's yeah. they are just so gnarly that is my dream lace right now i'm, I'm in the works of probably picking up a pair of those um yeah. and you know i want i would love to make some supers or not supers but some pink laces and then you know go back and forth but dude i just it just it's so much better than a snake. I don't know what to say, man. A, a lizard, a mu it just it's just it's fun. It's just more fun. It's more like it's yeah. like okay, imagine imagine a what dog that never played imagine a dog that never played fetch with you or a dog that just fucking Yeah. Like, dude, do something. Like, come on. Like, dude, my dogs have personalities. My dogs fucking are hyper because of me. Yeah. So, I mean, a monitor, they have personalities, you know, they they just like I said, they have they have good days, they have bad days, they have you know, whatever days, I just don't know. I just feel like I get more out of it. No, no offense. I, I, I gotta say, I still, still love the snakes. You know, I just, I'm just telling you how I feel. Yeah, no, I hear you, bro. I, I got, I got two uh, little Asian water monitors. Well, they're about like three feet right now, and they're fucking awesome, man. Like, I just go in there and like just rub their chin, or like they just like <laughs> very curious. They look at me, they look in my eyes, and then they kind of like crawl out. They're very, very just. A different kind of reptile for sure on a different level you're married right david no i'm not married this is you're uh not? no this is my grandfather's name but i got a, a pretty serious girlfriend okay but marriage is is maybe in the future are you, are you somebody who believe in marriage or you want to be with this girl forever i do uh no mary i'm not like particularly religious or anything so right. marriage would be more more for her and you know to make her happy and stuff but, um, yeah, I'm not like, it's not like, it doesn't do anything from, I, funny enough, I was just at a wedding yesterday for one of my best friends and it was beautiful and we had right. an awesome time. So what I like about that is just like bringing everybody together and just like the meaning behind it. But, um, it'd be mostly for her. Yeah. So, I mean, oh, you gotta understand at some point you, you know, could be a possibility where you will be a married man and you will be getting into that you know i guess taking the plunge i've done it <laughs> yeah I, I'm sorry, I know but let me ask you this man what is what is uh it could change the dynamic for some people out there like some people could be very like i'm gonna do this shit right and then they get married and it's like you know they're not always on the same page how much is your lady on the same page with you and the reptiles and how much of that did you make clear before you even got serious with her i'm curious Oh, she's awesome, man. She's she actually she's the one who does all the customer service stuff. She like schedules oh, the shipments cool. and all of that. So she's super on board. And before like we met, I was already doing this, so she knew what she was getting into. And she has, she also loves animals. So she's been around the animal world for as long as I have. So she's she she's not weirded out about it or anything like that. And you know, I don't know, like some some are very curious about numbers and whatnot, you know, and, and, and are any of that kind of topic of conversation happens between you and your lady? Like, do, I mean, or that's why I asked if you're married, you know, some people feel like they need to talk numbers with their wife and, and, and I'm not trying to tell them to do anything, but I'm just saying how, how you would probably work it. Like, let's say you became married, right? I mean, mm -hmm. how, how much involved do you feel like people should get their wives? Like, if you feel like the more, the better or, or not even their wives, but their significant other, right? In, in your case. Uh, just depends on, honestly, it depends on the relationship that they have and, and how much the wife or the significant other is into it. Just because I think that, you know, it's, it's the animal business is very, it could be very, 
it's not like all sunshine and rainbows. There could be, you know, it's a lot of dirty work and stuff like that. So if your significant other, especially the ladies, if they're not into it, I wouldn't put that on them. But uh, it, as far as the numbers things, I, it's not like I'm hiding it. I, it's not something we talk about on a regular basis or anything, but it's not something she really asked about. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, how much do you kind of look at your productions year after year and look at increase or decrease, especially during a recession right now, right? Are you going into 2023 trying to make even more than you did this year? Or is there like a certain game plan to that? So no, what, what we're going, I think this year we are definitely going to gear towards a little bit of higher end stuff. Now we always have had our high end projects and stuff, but we're going to let go of, a lot more of the normal stuff and mm. we're going to focus on more high end stuff because I think, um, in a recession, I think when times get tough, the normal stuff, the stuff that people are just buying as a pet is gonna, it's not going to sell as much, but the stuff that people are selling as investments or like future projects or the people who are balls deep into this, into the, the reptiles, they're going to want to get it regardless, you know? So, that's why I think that when times are tough, I think your best bet is to focus on, on, the, on the higher end stuff for sure. How many, like, you know, you were talking about your, you know, the Asian market, the, the Asia market, right? And then there are uh, the people here in the US. I mean, how much, like how many people are asking for bigger purchases? Is it more on the, 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 the Asia market or is it here in the United States? Like where are the bigger number of purchases coming from right now for you? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, it's definitely coming from over there right now. It's going to be their, their, their market, the reptile market is just booming right now. So they're asking to buy hundreds and hundreds of geckos and wow. yeah, I'm not wholesaling hundreds of geckos to anybody here in the U S it's, it's all over there. So their stuff is wow. like a lot of people are getting into it right now over there. Holy shit. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy, bro. Like the, and the number that if I could sell them more, they would buy more, but I just physically can't produce that much. Let me ask you this. Let's just say shit really were to hit the fan in the, in the, in this country. Do you feel like just right now what's happening in Asia is going to be able to keep Tiki geckos alive? If that, if that were to like, let's just say worst case. Um, yeah, uh, honestly, I think so. I don't think we're at a point where, if shit hits the fan here that we have a really bad recession, we, I still, we still be okay. There's still going to be obviously customers in the U S it's not like nobody's ever going to buy ever again. So I think we'd be fine. Right. But, but uh, definitely the Asians are helping a lot right now. My Asian friends. Shout out to the Asian homies. Um, well, listen, I got a wrap up question for you before we get into some hot seat questions. Okay, David. Um, and I'm curious the topic that I've had quite a bit, if not every gecko episode for the last four episodes is the um, Brian from altitude exotics, having that big blowout sell in Las Vegas. Um, I guess it was over 500 K in gecko sales. Mm -hmm. How much, are, how much of that being a reality? Do you feel like that is in your opinion? Do you ever feel like you could ever sell that much? Or do you even feel like that's something that would happen again? I'm just curious on how you feel about that. In a reptile show that is insane. Um, I, I obviously heard about that as well and kudos to him man. he invested in a project at the right time when nobody, he was the first guy to bring a Xanthic uh, crested geckos to the market really to like put them out there and right. he's been, he did it right. You know, he held back a lot of stuff. He produced a lot of stuff. He started making the combos and the market just happened. The, the market just happened to get a big inflation when he was at the right spot at the right time and and that kind of stuff doesn't that kind of stuff doesn't happen often at all i don't know if that has ever happened to to a gecko breeder before but uh that's pretty amazing i don't know that's not something that you should bank on <laughs> because that's that's something very rare and kudos to him and he he deserves it he has he's been in this game for a long time he's been breeding a long time also and he's made right the right moves with that. 
Now, as much as you shouldn't like base off that and think, oh, that's a fucking everyone's doing that, it, it should still motivate oh. you too at the same time, though, right? Oh, one hundred percent. It it's, it 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 opens up the possibilities. It shows people what can be done. So I think that that is going to bring you know it's going to motivate people that are already in the gecko industry in the gecko game. It definitely motivated me, but it's also going to bring in new people that think that it's going to be easy. And, and that, that can, you know, some people are going to come in and they're going to get burnt, but it's, it's a good eye opener for the possibility of this. Cause I think crested geckos could be as big as ball pythons. Easy. I, I think they could be bigger than ball pythons. If I'm I mean, honest. it's, Bro, after this year, it could change very quickly. I'm telling you right now, there's uh, ball python people, like there's a big fuss right now. And like behind the scenes, there's a big fuss about ball python cells, even with bigger, higher end people. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. like that could be a, a, a cause of people wanting to want to put things out for sale. Like I got to tell you right now, like I have shit on my morph market that's well underpriced compared to other shit. But now I'm like, should I price it less? But I'm like, why would I do that? I don't want, I like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like I'm almost, so we're like, well, I'll just hold on to it and wait for it becomes older and I'll wait for this shit to go away and then I'll sell it when I need to sell it. But yeah, you know, it's up to you to it, be, bro, it's, it's, it, it, it goes like this, you yeah, know, it we'll have it, it'll, the day will come and it might come soon that gecko sales crash all the way down and it's not going to be moving like it has been. So, you know, it, that's what I say. That's what I was saying in my uh, in my other video I was doing. It's like, dude, it goes up and down, and something that's buzzing today might not be buzzing tomorrow, and something that's not buzzing tomorrow or today might be buzzing tomorrow. So you don't you don't really know. You just got to kind of like hold out sometimes, because if you've put in so much money into a project, you don't want to just sell it for pennies, you know? No. And that's why it's up to you to be in the position to where, okay, if you can't sell it for what you should sell it for, then chill out. Don't sell it. Yeah. Don't, don't get desperate, you know, but man, I can tell you right now, there's, des there, there's, there's some desperateness going on, um, which I feel like they're, that's just immaturity of people being in the game. As long as they have, they don't understand that it's just like this, you know what I mean? It's, it's going to happen. So, yeah. And, and to be, to be honest, when people get desperate, that may be the best time to hop into a project if you were looking to seriously. Do that. I was gonna so, say that. I was gonna say that, bro. Because eventually ball pythons are, are big enough where they're gonna come back. They're gonna they're always gonna be popular. We already know that. I mean, so if there's somebody dumping animals like that and you have some extra cash laying around, it might be a good time to invest in them. Amen. Amen, dude. Listen, I love how you casually hit the ball. <laughs> hour for hey, listen, hour 40 minutes went by very quick, David. I appreciate your for time, sure, but we got, we got hot seat questions. Okay, I got I gotta hit you, hit you with these hot seat questions. Uh, guys, again, where are the likes at? Let's see where the likes are at. Let's see how much of a difference we're at. Uh, we are at uh 65 likes. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. I like that. That's that's a better ratio. You feel me? All right. Hot seat questions for the homie David, Tiki Geckos. David, the quicker, the better. That's what she said. You ready for this? <laughs> you ready? Let's go. Here we go. Coming in hot. Favorite gecko diet? Rapashi. Frozen thought or live when it came to snakes? Frozen thought. Would you ever snip, snip, cut an egg open, or would you never snip, snip, cut an egg open? I would, depending on the circumstances. Red chondro neo or yellow chondro neo? Yellow. I like that. Pre first shed meal or post first shed meal? Post. Yay imports or boo imports? Yay. One reptile you would import to your collection anywhere around the world, doesn't matter what it is, what would it be? Well, um, a bronia. <laughs> Wow. Woo. Okay. I'm going to write that down for our round two. We'll talk about a bronia. I love a bronia, yeah. bro. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. What about, what about one reptile? Nobody should ever import ever. Leave it alone. Well, I mean, obviously the, the, the stuff that is super rare, that is not going to like, I listen, I've heard some crazy stories about people having uh marine iguanas in captivity that shouldn't be 
you know, kept. So that goes without saying, obviously, but there's certain animals like I think like for more simple um, like keepers, like red eye tree frogs, honestly, they don't the vast majority of them die when they get imported. So that's an animal that I wouldn't import. Respect to miss a reptile, any reptile or to not miss. Depends on the animal, but missed since I'm a gecko guy. What would be one reptile you wouldn't miss? Uh, Euromastics. I oh. honestly know it. It just depends, but for the sake of the hot seat questions, the Euromastics. <laughs> okay, that was actually a good because I would think like I was very curious. What would he say? But a very that's a high desert. That's a that desert. I mean, excuse me. That's a that reptile doesn't see much water, does it? Or it no. does. No, okay. not, not at all. Not at all. Okay. But then, you know, people, but they still do need water sometimes. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yay sports or boo sports? Yay, bro. Come on. Fa favorite sport? MMA. Nice. Favorite UFC fight of all time? Favorite UFC fight of all time? Jose Aldo versus Chad Mendez. In, Damn. In Rio Rio. Bro. Hey, that, that was That's a brawl, man. bro. That yeah. was a what was that 20, 2017? I forget. That was uh yeah, right around that. I'm not sure. I, I remember it was it was the second one in Brazil. That was a sick fight, dude. I'm gonna watch that after this. I'm not joking. That's a really good fight. <laughs> you should. Respect. Big flexor or no flexor? What you mean? You flex or you don't flex? Come on, don't don't, don't ask me oh, what bro. I mean. Let's, Let's go. go. We're the big flexors. Flexor. <laughs> Little weenie, sit down. We big flex. I love it. Steak or fish? Uh, steak, 100%. West Coast rap or East Coast rap? I'm in the East Coast, but I would go with West Coast. Favorite I, West I, Coast. What would be your favorite West Coast rap group or rapper of all time? Tupac. Nice. You can't go wrong. All right, here we go. Little word association. First thing to come to mind, FedEx shipping. Horrible. Milk. Cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Substrate. Mulch. First time gecko breeder. Crested geckos. Cocoa. Meat. Fiber. <laughs> Stuck shed. Water. Morph market. Sales. Facebook. Drama. <laughs> Amen, brother. Um, <laughs> Instagram trolls. Losers. Losers. Okay. If you had to delete one plat social media platform off the face of the earth forever, is it going to be TikTok or Twitter? TikTok. Just because I, I actually like TikTok better, but I just think it's not good for humanity, dude. <laughs> God bless. He's but making our attention span way too short. Do you see how China runs their TikTok for like their kids? How it's like, bro, it's that's next level, bro. We need I that. Was, like what they show, what they program for us to see versus what they program them to see. It's kind of scary. Bro, I don't, I don't think that should be, uh, I would just snap my fingers. It's on purpose, bro. Should, literally they China. Okay. Understand China has, I guess there's some sort of control that China has over the, over the social media platforms being put out. I could be wrong, but either way, they're looking at us deteriorating each other. Like they're looking at us. They're seeing what social media is doing to us. And they're like laughing and they're fucking yeah. doing that. Like educational shit, dude. I don't know if I ever have a kid in the next, I don't know. They're, they're on that China social media shit, bro. That's all I got to say. Keep them off of social media for as long as you possibly can. Yeah. yeah. No, they're going to be playing in the dirt. I'll homeschool them. They'll play in the dirt and fucking play with, you know what I mean? That's it. The snakes. Hey, listen, dude, we had just over 90 people tapped in for this fucking episode. Thank you so much. Sunday, that's big. The gecko breeder sessions are blowing up. You just helped this episode blow up. Thank you so much, David. Thanks, but what do you have? What do you have to say to all your supporters out there, man? Everyone fucking with you, all your new customers from Black Friday. What do you have to say to all your supporters out there, bro? Hey, thank you guys so much for the support over all these years. I say this all the time, but we really wouldn't be able to do what we love if it wasn't for you guys. So I appreciate every single one of you guys. And MJ, man, thanks for hosting this thing and, and bringing the community together, bro. I appreciate that.
No, listen, thank you for being a force to be reckoned with. Understand that I'm just, I don't want to say that I had to bring you on, but it's only right because I have a Gecko series now. But I've been knowing who you were before this series, man. And I got to say, that's all because of what you do, man. Your fucking promos that you're doing, all your posts, the energy, that shit's not easy to do day after day. And I got to say, man, to see someone matching the shit that I'm doing, kudos to you, my player. Thank you, bro. Anytime you want to have me on, man, just give me a ring. I want Manny next time. Not to sound that sounds weird, but I just said <laughs> I want <laughs> sure. we'll get him on. We'll get him on. Listen, bro, I do remote podcasts once a month. Who knows what 2023 will bring, but maybe I could fly to you guys next time and we do an episode in person and we all get this shit together, bro. For sure, bro. If you're in Florida, if you're in South Florida, hit me up. All right, brother. Listen, go give him a follow. Tiki's Geckos, and go subscribe to his YouTube channel. I, I smell 100K coming your way. I'm not even joking. Big things coming from the homies at Tiki Geckos. But that's a wrap. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Dave at Tiki's Geckos. Thank you, bro. All Appreciate right, bro. Thank it, you so much. Hey, have a good night. Thank you so much, bro. You too, MJ. See you, Peace. man. Peace. What a good fucking guy. What a good time. Man, energy feels right. Guys, thank you so much. Do me a favor. Dude, the, I, I can't complain. The likes are fucking up there. The like over 70 likes. Thank you so much. I salute you. Uh, drop a comment. Um, I got to let you know this was a really awesome gecko episode. Not that you don't know that, but guys, drop a comment. Let me know what you liked best about this episode. Um, remember to, okay, guys, one thing I didn't mention in the beginning of the episode, head over to my website, okay? Because I'm getting a lot of inquiries and I'm excited for these inquiries, but goddamn, they're kind of getting stressful. They're starting to build up. But guys, head over to my website because I have one thing that is live, one thing that is ready to go. Um, my my trap shirts, man, trap merch. If you want to get a Trap Talk podcast t-shirt, the new logo, it's available to anyone out there, okay? Go to my website, trappodcast.com, click on shop, and then head down and click on that shirt right there. And here you could actually make a purchase for the new Trap Talk 2.0 t-shirts on my website. I want to make sure you guys are now knowing how to get one of these shirts because I get hit up all the time. Patreon members, you guys already know, hit me up directly and I got you. But anyone out there who watches my show, anyone out there who's trying to cop a Trap Talk 2.0 t-shirt, that's it. The logo. This is like the bat signal for the Reptile Podcast world. That's right. Coolest Reptile Podcast in the world and that's a fact. But guys, also on the website, just so you guys know, you guys can actually stay on top of all my other you know, my YouTube channels, you know, I have my, my vlogging channel, which by the way, if you did not check out that vlog, I just dropped recently on my channel, go to the trap vlogs on YouTube, go subscribe to my YouTube channel where I put out vlogs, but I just had an awesome facility tour with Joel from state 48 exotics. What a guy. Thank you so much for your guys' love and support. Uh, Patreon members. What is good? Are you ready for this trap talk after party? Yeah, that's right. Guys, if you're looking for extra content, if you're looking to tap in more than what you are currently tapped in with in this reptile industry, man, look in. Dude, if you're just looking for some fucking outreach, go down to the link below. Click on the very first link. Trap Talk Patreon family. Become a part of the Patreon family. As soon as you become a part of the Patreon family, you get a link to the Discord. Over 150 motherfucking trappers in the building. It goes off. But it also shows you the link to the Zoom call. That's going to be the AKA Trap Talk patreon after party guys thank you so much for all your love and support have a great sunday patreon members i'll see you in a bit oh i forgot to mention it's not done i forgot to mention i forgot to mention i forgot to mention what is happening this week can i please just let you guys know what's happening this week thank you tomorrow I got to say, I have someone who is coming to the New Breed on the Block series, 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, who is very highly recommended. Someone who is, like, literally there's people blowing up about how excited they are of having this guy come to the platform. So I, got, I have to mention that tomorrow night, New Breed on the Block series, I have my man, Villarino Reptiles, Emilio, coming to the damn Trap Talk Roundtable. It's going to be amazing, man. This guy right here is killing it in the shows, doing big things, making connection all over the country. All, all over the country. Well, all over the hobby is what I wanted to say, but that's going to be going down. And then all my ball python, take that back, my green tree python lovers out there, if you're in the green tree python 
uh, trap side of things. If you uh, are interested in green tree pythons, if you want to know more about green tree pythons, if you want to know like who are the ones who are the most consistently successful at breeding green tree pythons, then Thursday night is something you're going to want to consider tapping in. I mean, you should, especially on my damn trappers out there. But goddamn, I have a legend coming to the goddamn trap round table Thursday, six o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Buddy Bushimi. Busimi. Busimi. Did I say that right? I'll find out. Either way, six o'clock Pacific Standard Time. That's all I have to say. Trappers, I'll see you in a bit. Trap Talk Patreon after party going down. Shit's going to be lit. Have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.